Hi, my name is Jessica Sindel. I'm an associate attorney with Anderson and & Bobeck, and I'm here to talk about remote prove-up hearings during the COVID-19 pandemic and in light of the shelter-in-place order. So first of all, I think it's really important to know that even though the physical courthouses themselves are largely closed to non-emergency matters, that the courts are still running. Judges are still conducting hearings, they're issuing rulings, they're entering orders, they're just working remotely like most of the rest of us. And so don't think that just because a shelter in place order has been uh, issued that your case can't move forward and that you can't actually finalize your divorce. You absolutely can. And if anything, a remote hearing you may find to be a more convenient and an easier process than an in-person hearing. So first of all, I think it's important to know that you can only set a remote hearing if both parties are in agreement with having the matter heard remotely. So in order to be able to move forward, your attorney or your spouse's attorney will need to draft an order saying that both parties agree to have the hearing conducted remotely rather than in person. Once that order is entered and forwarded to the judge, then the judge can go ahead and set the hearing and give you a date and a time when they'll be available. The judge will also let you know how they would prefer to conduct the hearing. Um, it's been my experience thus far that generally the judges seem to prefer Zoom and prefer video conferencing. Uh, it's my opinion that they prefer to be able to see the parties and see the attorneys. I think that helps them feel a little more confident in their rulings and in issuing orders versus via telephone. That said, teleconferencing, telephone hearings are definitely available. So if that's the only technology that's available to you, if you don't have a computer or a smartphone or a data connection that would allow you to download and participate in a Zoom hearing, just let your attorney know that. And the attorney can let the judge know that and you can get that figured out. So I actually conducted my first remote hearing this week, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about how it went and what I think are some of the advantages to having your matter heard remotely. First of all, I wanna say one of the great advantages I think is that the hearing was very focused and very quick because there was nothing else going on in the courtroom, no other cases were being called, no other issues needed to be dealt with. It meant that we had the judge's full attention, we conducted the prove up without any interruptions or distractions, and all in all, I would say that the hearing itself and the testimony was probably done within approximately 15 minutes. So that was really a great use of everybody's time and a real convenience for my client that she didn't have to spend a whole lot of time waiting in court for her case to be called. For anybody who's been in the midst of a long divorce case and has been to other court dates and participated in other hearings, I think they can really appreciate just how nice it is to have the matter heard on time without having to wait for other cases to be called. Also, conducting a hearing remotely is arguably the most convenient hearing you're ever going to have. My client didn't have to worry about driving to court, parking, getting to the right courtroom. All she had to worry about was making sure that she had access to Zoom at the right time and was logged in when I asked her to be logged in. So very convenient, very easy for her. In terms of formality, I think it's really important to remember that even though these proceedings are being conducted remotely, they are still formal judicial proceedings. So when you see the judge, the judge will be wearing their robe. Your attorney will be dressed professionally. You yourself should dress the way that you normally would when going to court and just be cognizant of the fact that the judge can see you throughout the, the proceeding. The judge will swear you in, or if they have a staff member who's participating as well, that person might swear you in. And you will need to give formal testimony in order to finalize your divorce. When I prepare clients for prove up hearings, I like to give them a script of questions to review, to go over, um, so that they know what they're going to testify to and they're familiar with what questions I'm going to ask. If that's not an opportunity that you have, I think it's important just to remember that you're going to be testifying to information that you know really well. You're going to be testifying to your marriage, you're gonna be testifying about information about your spouse, you're also going to be testifying about the terms of your settlement agreements and asking the judge to finalize your divorce. So it's really not something to be terribly nervous or concerned about. In terms of suggestions for preparing for a remote prove up hearing, my first suggestion would be to make sure that if you are using Zoom or some other software that you download it well in advance, you get a chance to familiarize yourself with it, that you feel comfortable with the software before it's actually time for the hearing. 
I would also recommend signing on early so that you and your attorney are able to figure out if there are any technical difficulties, any problems with hearing or visuals, your internet connection, so that hopefully those things can all be resolved so that by the time the judge signs on, the parties, whoever's participating, the attorneys are all up and ready to go. I also think it's really important as much as possible to find a quiet and a private space where you'll be able to focus, you'll hear the questions that are being asked of you, you'll be able to think about your responses without any distractions or interruptions. And one other point that I want to make to those of you who are actually respondents in your case and not the petitioner, like in-person court appearances, you do not have to be present or participate in the hearing. If you are represented by an attorney, an attorney can appear on your behalf or in the agreed order, you can request to be excused and explain that you don't wanna participate in the hearing and you absolutely don't have to be present. So just to be clear, if you are a respondent in a case, don't feel that you have to participate because this is a remote hearing versus an in-person hearing. If you don't wish to be present at the court date, you don't have to be. Overall, I would say that anybody who is ready to finalize their divorce, move forward with setting a remote prove up hearing. It's quick, it's easy, and it's incredibly convenient. There's no reason to wait. You can move forward with your case right now. Thanks.